Hey YouTube, Ron Bessie here. This is a follow-up video from my first one on this trike. Uh, this is a Kohler four-cycle engine. It's the uh, 27 horses what initially started out with. Um, if you watch the other video, you see a lot of the other modifications I've done. Um, update on this is I've changed the exhaust system. This is a stock side mount Kohler oil filter side. Uh, exhaust on it now our muffler system now if you look it attaches each side there it wraps around it actually clears the redirect reduction drive try to get a better shot in here come around it's a lot quieter very solid mount you're going to put the whole track by and don't even wobble um, Change some other things. Got a, a 15 tooth um, idler sprocket on here now just to take up some of the slack. Uh, a lot of YouTube trolls were ripping me a new one on different things on this. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I've talked to the chain manufacturers and they said it didn't matter that it had the slop in it. Uh, doesn't hurt the chain at all, but this makes it a little bit nicer, neater looking. Uh, adds more work and more weight to the reduction drive. But uh, doesn't do anything as far as performance. Um, you know, on a belt, you obviously got to take the slack out of it, but this has still got a little bit of slack on it. Now, once it's rotating with the propeller, this is going to pull pull tight, and then you'll end up with your slack on this side. Um, probably got a good 20 hours on this chain, and you know, there's absolutely nowhere at all. You can see all it's done is wear a little bit of the oxide finish off the idler and that's it. Um, another thing I changed was the intake that I previously had was kind of an L-shaped one. Actually it was this one over here I'll show you. Took that off, looked like like plumber's nightmare there so I made up. Uh, so I changed it out to be a little bit nicer, neater package. Just a block of 6061 T6 aluminum and machined out and on the carburetor directly under that. So it kind of brings it a little bit tighter, looks a little neater, makes a nice neater package to fit under, you know, some type of cowling or something if it was on a tractor configuration. Um, it's really the only two or three changes I made was exhaust, the idler, and then that intake. Um, give you a little bit overview for those that's the first time seeing this one as opposed to the other one. Here, uh, I've had like lots and lots and lots of people asking why I went with chain as opposed to belt, and what was the limit a chain can do, and on and on and on. I think even one of the comments I put a YouTube link to, uh, all drag racing motorcycles to show that they're using a lot smaller chain than I got on this, and they're doing 200 plus mile an hour and a quarter mile with them, and. Uh, just to give you an example, here's the, the chain. This is just another chain that I had made on a different reduction drive ratio, so I had it kind of left over. Uh, but just to give you an idea of the size, this is 5 8 or 50 pitch compared to my fingers size wise, and that's one of the previous sprockets I've had. Uh, let's do an example. This is my youngest kid's bicycle, and I can ride it as embarrassing as it looks to see me on this thing. Uh, I can ride that, but to give you an example in chain size, and you guys asked for it, so now you're going to get this. We're going to do some math. Okay, just to give you an example, um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'll kind of go over it verbally. Let's see, we have obviously your torque calculations here is radius times you know pounds if we're going to go to uh, foot pounds of torque and the rotax 447 which is what i was trying to do here with uh with this four cycle engine was to mimic the 447 because they no longer make it and to get away from a two cycle and try to you know the options of four cycle um and the benefits of it its peak torque is 44.7 foot pounds of torque uh, this one here that I've got from Kohler in their uh, manual, and that's also from the Rotax one there. 
uh, it's 42.3 foot-pounds of torque and then this one's for the, the two carburetor um, configuration so it's their maximum they can get out of that that particular configuration without you know other personal modifications people might do to them um, okay so to give you this example these are real close in comparison here as their maximum torque okay now uh, a person that weighs 180 pounds riding a bicycle uh, and the crank on your pedal is about six inches so it's a half a foot that times that you end up with 90 foot-pounds of torque so when you're comparing chain to chain I really don't even need a chain that big on there actually half that size is all I need to run this now obviously that's way 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 overkill for what I'm trying to do here but I don't want the problems of derailing or some kind of issues like that with alignment this is a lot more forgiving because of the surface area of each roller uh, to be forgiving for you know slight misalignments or vibrations or something plus I never have to worry about this ever wearing out uh, take a lifetime to probably wear that chain out so uh, just doing the math and there's no magic everything's math um, another thing is like when you're looking at you know I mentioned in the previous video the 5252 uh, that's getting into where the calculation for where horsepower was divided by uh, two pi radians um, when you're getting into the horsepower if you look if rpm ever reached 5252 these two would cancel you end up with torque equals horsepower so whatever your torque is your horsepower would be at 5252 rpm um, like i said i do all the math and everything's real simple straightforward to me uh, a lot of people who had superstitions and folklores about the the chains and stuff like that and you know talking to people that manufacture change they got a kick out of it uh, but you know your chains never going to wear out same as you know we've been riding on motorcycles for 100 years and you know the the motorcycle people hate belts and the belt or the airplane people hate chains and it's all superstition in both directions um, when you actually do the math on it and the, there's nothing wrong with belts belts work great they just you know i just don't care for the belts for lots of ergonomic reasons um, if you're not using a timing belt and you got the potential of slippage in a pusher configuration if you get any oil leaks it could spray onto the, the belt which could cause slippage uh, may or may not be any kind of an issue at all you know I've had belts on things that work great um, so you know I got nothing against the belt but the reason I went with chain was just because it was very simple to design I didn't have to worry about uh, alignment issues like I did with uh, when I was trying to develop a uh, belt system I had one of the belts get eight up on me while I was and it was perfectly aligned so it just I maybe had a bad belt and it just came apart but it was not something I wanted to experience in flight um, I got the propeller off this just so you guys can get a better look at it I'll put the propeller back on uh, fire it up and if there's no neighbors around I might shoot around the neighborhood in it uh, you know, obviously it's a wing off but just give you kind of a follow-up uh, because I had enough requests asking for one and just to show some of the more modifications to it um, I figure I'm pretty much done with whatever I wanted to accomplish with this so I'll probably end up selling this particular track because uh, I got another project I want to start on um, I just, I don't know, anybody that knows me knows I just enjoy designing and building and once I'm done with them I usually sell them and start another project. Uh, it's kind of like one of these things where I, I just enjoy kind of the challenge of it more than, you know, uh, the piloting part of it. You know, more of a designer builder than pilot. Actually kind of stink as a pilot, so better at designing and building. So anyway, just give you a follow up and then I'll fire it up from there. and. and yeah, I may not say much after that. So, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, YouTube. Okay, I'm back. Sorry I didn't get this fired up yet. I get the propeller on. Uh, but I thought of a couple other things that I need to go over real quick, just from the questions I had. Uh, people was asking about vibration from the chain. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got chain belt geared. doesn't matter. If you're getting vibration, 99% uh, of the time, and this is my experience with lots of different 
propellers is your vibrations come from your propeller, not from your engine. Because if you can take the propeller off the engine and run it, then you get no vibration or just minimal like you would a riding lawnmower or anything else. Uh, that's what you should be getting because the internal parts on the engine is already balanced, so there's nothing else there that can vibrate. And you know, even with a single piston, uh, that that riding lawnmower is a single piston, and that they don't shake or vibrate or nothing. Just it's normal, you know, pulses that you feel, but it's not nothing uncomfortable. Um, the vibrations almost always come from the the propeller. I've I've bought everything from you know these ultra props all the way up to uh, Oh, what's the power fins and I've had a, I'm trying to think of the other one that I had that was, you know, like a thousand dollar propeller. Every one of them out of the box was out of balance and I had to balance them. Once you balance them, they're smooth as glass uh, because it's just another flywheel. So if you balance it, it's just going to stabilize it even more. Another thing is people's asked me about like direct drive right out of the engine. Um, two things. One is when you run direct drive out of any engine, you have to have a thrust bearing in there. That means that all the load being pulled or pushed on the crankshaft is being absorbed by some type of a bearing that uh, is not just your radial bearings for your connecting rods and uh, such. It's it's actually a thrust bearing that's at the end or the beginning of the the, the case of the engine to to compensate for that you know amount of pulling or pushing that's going on. When you're running through any kind of reduction. Uh, you don't have to worry about that because it's all radial forces and you don't have a forward or backward pull or push on it. Um, the other thing that happens is, let's do the math again, uh, you know like this is a 2.5 to 1 reduction so you're taking the 40 pounds of torque roughly at 5,000 5, RPMs and you're getting 100 foot pounds of torque at the propeller. Okay now the larger the propeller then that counteracts that because imagine Putting your hand on a on a small propeller and rotating it versus one that's way out there, it's a lot easier to rotate one that's further out based off the torque formula. So you're counteracting that with more power to the propeller because you're compressing that whole radial uh, area of uh, of the propeller is being compressing all that air. A uh, smaller propeller or a single blade or two blade propeller versus a four blade or three blade, you can see that it's a lot more area being compressed. So obviously the, the bigger the gear ratio, uh, the more power you're getting right to that propeller. Uh, 2.0 you know, to 1, you're only getting 80 pounds of, of torque at the propeller, but you're gaining speed. Uh, your compromise is that you're able to run the engine a little bit slower. You can't obviously run the propeller tips faster in the speed of sound or you end up with one a horrible noise and the other one is you end up with horrible inefficiencies. Uh, and obviously if it's a direct drive you're only right at the 40 pounds of torque which is not much at all but there again you get a lot of speed and you, you know if you have an engine that has a thrust bearing it'll take care of that so anyway just some more things to go over real quick uh, before I shut this off and fire this thing up okay bye up a little bit.
Okay, let's check some temperatures real quick. Before the neighbors freak out. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, exhaust temp. Uh, four, three. Uh, around three, three, almost 400. Cylinder head, 170, something is the highest. Chain, 100 degrees. Outside temperature, 85. Um, what else do we want? Oil filter. Oil filter, about 180. Yeah, let's see. Intake. About 160, so that's good for not needing any um, carb heat. The cylinder, about 170 something. Flywheel, 69 degrees. Uh, what else do we want? Little valve cover is 157. The same as outside temperature. Um, oil sender, oil pressure sender, 113. Exhaust here is. I think it gets up around six something right at 700 degrees out of the exhaust when it's running. That little idler's at like 120. So, you know, you literally can touch these things right after it runs. I wouldn't grab the exhaust, obviously, but not too bad. So, it, it could use a little bit more warm up time to. to you know, get a little more throttle response because obviously four cycle but ain't warmed up it's gonna get kind of a bottom end chop to it okay that's it talk to you later bye